While Getzloff is establishing himself as a ferocious dynamo up front, Peter Forsberg was a different breed of power forward who relied on skill rather than a short fuse. Forsberg made his anticipated NHL debut during the 1994-95 season, giving Quebec, and then the Colorado Avalanche, a dominant one-two punch with Joe Sackick. Forsberg flourished, displaying an awe-inspiring synergy of power and grace in all three zones. Eleven years later, another multi-talented young center named Evgeny Malkin began dancing through defenses and immediately drew comparisons to Forsberg for his multi-dimensional skill set. And just like Forsberg had Sackick as a running mate, Malkin has an elite partner by the name of Sidney Crosby, making up this generation's most dynamic duo. Malkin's in a pretty good situation right now, actually, because Sid Crosby is his teammate, so a lot of the attention gets focused on Crosby and Malkin, who skates on what's essentially a second line, although he'd be a first-line center anywhere else. He can do his thing. From out of Malkin, a shot, he scores! Evgeny Malkin! Malkin! Sensational! Here's Malkin shooting, he scores! Evgeny Malkin has done it, six goals in six games. The first player since 1917 to do that in the National Hockey League. He felt after that first goal, he felt more and more confident. And uh, the guys and the team helped him a lot. And they supported him. And he has the feeling that they helped him to score. So that's how it happened. Just like Malkin walked into an ideal situation riding shotgun to Sidney Crosby, Forsberg was the perfect complement to another established star. I think Peter's talent wasn't heralded to the NHL players, but then he just took the game by storm. I think that the combination of him and Sackick in, in Colorado was maybe two of the best centers that ever played on the same team ever in the history of the National Hockey League. I think Peter Forsberg always came to play, but he was always a notch above in the biggest games, and that, to me, is what always stood out with Forsberg. Are you kidding me? Second the shot, deflected wide by Forsberg. He scores! A job hat trick! A job hat trick for Peter Forsberg! Peter, uh, obviously, one of the best players in the league the last 15 years, a guy who really controlled the play when he was on the ice, and there's only a handful of guys in the league at any, in any given era that really actually controlled the play when they were on the ice. Um, just this combination of skill, strength, determination, and just a little bit of meanness, or a lot of meanness, actually, made him you know, one of the best, best players to play. Forsberg's a physical terror right now. He's just punishing everybody near a puck. Forsberg was a guy who, you know, nicknamed Forsberg because big physical guy with all the skills in the world to go with it. And Malkin's very much the same way. He is a really big player. He will take hits, he won't be intimidated, he won't back down from anything, he'll initiate a lot. And Forsberg was that same way. I mean, you could hack and whack at Forsberg all night long and he would still turn around and score the winning goal on him with 10 seconds left. Cleared up onside, looking into the middle, Drury couldn't get it. Side score! Malkin is so skilled that rather than carry somebody, he just puts a move on and go around him, which is also the case with Forsberg, you know, who uh, was skilled enough that he didn't have to deal with the physical play. Are you kidding me? Forsberg is fantastic! Another thing is they're both great in traffic and, and have played in traffic and succeeded, so I think they both could do it either uh, with finesse or purely physical. Ryan Malone to the front again. Crosby was tied up. Malkin! Sensational! Outstanding reach for Malkin to tie it at four! Malkin's adjustment to a new league was easier than his indoctrination to life away from the rink as he entered a new culture in a new world. 
The only thing we could do is give him every sort of support we could off the ice to make it as easy as possible for him. Um, I think he was very fortunate to have the Gonchar family to really lean on and live with, and they were great to him last year and certainly this year. But uh, he's really, you know, you can only do so much for a person. At, the, at that point, they have to take the initiative to try to either learn the language or fit in more, uh, fit in more with their teammates, and he certainly, to his credit, has done that. A lot of the guys are all over him for, uh, you know, trying to learn English and tell him to no sleep and just watch TV all day. We were probably a little bit mean a couple of times. He probably taught him the wrong words, but uh, he probably learned the wrong words first that he shouldn't have. But uh, that's the way it works, and you know we all uh, we all have laughs over that. And sometimes we'll be talking, and um, he'll be kind of stuck on a word, and he'll start speaking Russian to me. But I'm trying to explain to him it's not going to help. I don't know any Russian either. Although Malkin may not have been fluent in the different languages his teammates spoke, that didn't prevent him from getting his first North American nickname. The guys from the team started calling him Gino because it's easier for them to say Gino than Evgeny. It's short and there is there is nothing harassing about it. <laughs> but he's extremely grateful to all the coaches and to all the guys from the team who supported him, who helped him. And uh, now he is able, thanks to all these people, he is now able to show his best hockey.